One of the worst things that can happen to you today is to have a spinal cord injury. Because when that happens to you, you lose those connections below the site of the injury. One of the things you can't do, for example, is go to the bathroom on your own, precisely because you've lost control of everything below the point of the injury. And there are stimulators that have been designed that connect to those nerves that are disconnected from the brain to recover some of that lost function. However, the difference between what you're able to recover and what you had before is staggering. Uh, there is simply uh, so much work to be done and we're just scratching the surface. When you have a spinal cord injury, generally you think of implants being put in the brain to make a bridge between the brain and the location of the injury where you've lost uh, the natural ability to communicate the information. But what I'm looking at is making a direct connection to that part of the peripheral nervous system you've lost control of. So if you have control of your arms and you can press a button on a remote, you can then tell the implant inside of you to stimulate you in a certain way so that you are actually carrying out that function, such as urinating. One of the key problems is selectivity, the ability to only talk to those nerves which you've precisely targeted. And today, existing technologies, uh, when you implant them, they talk to all of the nerve fibers in a single nerve trunk, many different locations, uh, and that causes side effects from that stimulation, side effects which we want to avoid. A lot of research groups have been working on uh, making electrodes smaller and more selective, more invasive. But the problem with invasiveness is that the smaller you go and the closer you try to get to the nerve fibers, the more adversely the body responds to that implantation. Another method of doing the same thing is using the same well-tolerated technologies, but changing the stimulation algorithms, the stimulation modalities by which you try to talk to the nerves. And one way of doing that, which is at the core of my work, is studying how nerves interact with high frequency, high amplitude signals, because those can allow you to modulate nervous activity in a new way by inhibiting it rather than by stimulating it conventionally. And you inhibit the whole nerve trunk or you stimulate the whole nerve trunk, but you can combine the two to obtain selective stimulation and only talk to those nerves which are connected to the target organ. But using selective stimulation techniques, you can make the function more natural, more physiological as it was before you had the injury, and therefore restore a greater degree of control and a greater degree of independence. Studying how electric fields and nerves interact, notably at these high frequency, high amplitude scenarios, is uh, at the core of my research. And uh, I design systems that connect to these peripheral nerves. In order, to, um, in order to deliver these high frequency, high amplitude signals, make them work together with conventional rack equipment and design stimulation algorithms that combine the two to obtain that selective stimulation. I think that today um, there is still a lot of work to be done before we can give back those functions to the people who have unfortunately lost them. But the increased interest in the field of neuroprosthetics makes me quite optimistic for what we'll be able to achieve in perhaps 20 years time uh, for people who have lost the ability to stand.